Mirror by Sylvia Plant. An American poet, Sylvia Plant was born in Boston. She then lived in England for a while and married the English poet Ted Hughes. She published a semi autobiographical novel, The Bell Jar, under the pseudonym Victoria Lucas. However, in 1963, she committed suicide after a bout of depression. Sylvia Platt's work was in the realm of confessional poetry. Two of her best known collections are The Colossus and Other Poems and Arian. She was also the first boy to win the Pulitzer Prize after death for the collected poems. Her poem Mirror personifies the mirror and explains how a mirror can reflect one's soul. Let's listen to the poem. In this poem, the poet Sylvia Plath explains how the mirror is our true reflection and can be our best critic. She personifies the mirror by making it the narrator of the poem. The mirror asserts that it is silver and holds no opinions beforehand. It praises itself saying its judgments are precise without prejudice. The mirror takes in whatever it sees, a man, woman, child or objects and reflects them just as they are without distortion and without being affected by the emotions of love and hatred. Often, emotions color our view of a person or a thing. However, a mirror refuses to be influenced by these emotions. The mirror insists it is not cruel, only truthful. It is proud that it reflects nothing but the reality. The mirror also claims to be like the God's eye that is four-cornered and can see and reflect everything in same light without any biases. When there aren't any objects looking at themselves in the mirror, mirror usually mediates by looking at the wall opposite it. The wall is pink and worn out. The mirror explains that it has looked at the opposite wall for so long that it now feels that the wall is a part of its heart. This is another example of how the mirror has been personified to have a heart and to form an intimate, long-term bond with the wall despite its imperfections. However, the mirror's mediation is broken when the wall is separated from the mirror by the darkness of the night or when face is intruded by looking into the mirror. It appears that the mirror likes to look at the wall and does not like the darkness or people's faces coming in between. The mirror also compares itself to a lake, which may not be silver and exact but has more depth. A woman bends over and looks at her reflection, searching and hoping to find out what she really is and hoping the leak will give her answers. Dissatisfied by what she sees and guided by her insecurities, she turns for consolation to the candles and moon that are also the symbols of romance. The mirror considers the moon and candle liars because their dim light deceives her by concealing her flaws and her age. Mira asserts the fact that it reflects faithfully what it sees without sugar-coating it or hiding anything from the woman. But the woman does not like what the mirror shows and starts crying and fumbling with her hands. She finds it hard to believe that she is aging and losing her beauty from the mirror's reflection. Despite being hurt with the harsh truth, the mirror is important to the woman, and that's why she comes again and again to look at herself in the mirror. The mirror that sits in darkness finds that every morning she comes to check herself in the mirror. The woman has been looking at herself in the mirror since she was a young girl. 
It appears that she has drowned her youth in the mirror, which also compares itself to a lake. The mirror is also synonymous for the passage of time. As the days progress, along with her mental turmoil at the loss of her youth, her present reflection is compared to a terrible fish rising from the depths of the lake. The terrible fish represents old age and death drawing closer to her. Thus, in this poem, Sylvia Plath has personified the mirror as God, as a lake, and even as a terrible fish. Apart from personifications, the poet has also used pointing devices like metaphors as seen in this stanza. Sylvia Plath has discussed various themes of truth, reflection, aging and death, and through all these themes, the mirror emerges as the best critic and reflects one's true inner self.